The 1988 McDonald's All-American team is one of the best teams I've covered. Not only are there a few future All-Stars in the mix, but the class features several guys who carved out solid careers in the pros, and nearly everyone contributed at a good level in college. There are still a few good players who, for whatever reason, didn't make the cut in 88. The list of players who didn't make the squad includes one-time All-Star Tom Gugliotta, seven-time champ Robert Ory, and four-time All-Star Latrell Sprewell, among many others. With that being said, let's take a look at what happened to every McDonald's All-American player from the 88 squad. Mahmoud abdul Rauf, Born Chris Jackson, abdul Rauf was raised by his mother alongside his two brothers, Omar and David. The youngster grew up in poverty and missed his entire fourth grade year of school. Abdul Rauf had a moderate form of threat syndrome that wasn't diagnosed until he was 17. While his circumstances kept him out of organized basketball, he was discovered by a middle school girls coach in Gulfport who convinced his mom to sign him up. That turned out to be a great move as the 6 foot 1 point guard averaged 30 points and 6 assists during his senior year earning a scholarship to play at LSU. He was an instant star for the Tigers, dropping 48 points in his third game on campus. He would go on to win National Freshman of the Year that season, while setting an NCAA record for points scored by a freshman and points per game as a freshman. He also won his first SEC Player of the Year award and made the first team All-American squad. As a sophomore, his scoring went down slightly, but he still picked up his second SEC Player of the Year award and made the first team All-American squad. He decided to head to the NBA, where the Nuggets selected him with the third pick in the 1990 draft. He made the All-Rookie second team, averaging 14 points while coming off the bench to spell leading scorer Michael Adams. That year, he also converted to Islam, though he wouldn't change his name until 93. In 93, he also led the Nuggets in scoring at 19 points a night while participating in the dunk contest despite never dunking in an NBA game. He also picked up the Most Improved Player Award. His numbers with Denver stayed relatively consistent through 96 when he was traded to the Kings. It's worth noting that he came under quite a bit of controversy when he refused to stand for the national anthem before games in 96. He eventually came to an agreement with the league that he would stand but closed his eyes and looked downward. After leaving Denver, Abdul Rauf's numbers dropped off a bit and he signed with the Turkish team Fenerbahce in 1998. He didn't finish out the season and retired, but came back to play with the Vancouver Grizzlies in 2000. Since then, he's signed to play with several teams overseas, most recently playing for a team in Japan in 2011. As of 2024, he was playing for the three-headed monsters in the Big Three League. If you're interested in digging deeper into his story, there was a 2023 documentary called Stand all about his life. Eric Anderson. Anderson was a star player in Chicago and can be seen in one scene in the classic documentary Hoop Dreams. He took his talents to Indiana for college ball, winning Big Ten Newcomer of the Year after dropping 12 points and six boards a night. The six foot nine forward averaged double digit points every season of his four year career, with his best season coming as a sophomore when he averaged 16 points and seven boards. He'd make first team all Big Ten in 91 as a junior, but his numbers dropped slightly as a senior and he went undrafted in 92. He signed with the Knicks as an undrafted free agent playing in 27 games over two years as one of the last players off the New York bench. He played overseas and in the CBA until retiring in 1998. That same year, he married fitness entrepreneur Tracy Anderson. The couple divorced in 2008 and have a son named Sam. Sadly, Anderson passed away in 2018. He was working in commercial banking at the time of his death. Milton Bell. At some point in his youth, Bell moved to Richmond, Virginia to play at John Marshall High School. He was a standout forward, averaging 17 points, 11 boards, and a ludicrous nine blocks a night as a senior. He joined the Georgetown Hoyas to start his college career. As a freshman, he played sparingly, averaging 3.4 points with two boards off the bench. 17 games into his second season, Bell left the team saying he wanted more playing time. Which, considering the other player from this class that joined the Hoyas, makes a lot of sense. He transferred to the University of Richmond, but the NCAA said he'd have to wait to play until the next season due to transfer rules. That summer, Bell lost his two years of eligibility at Richmond because he wasn't making enough progress to a degree. Bell played for a season in the CBA, but quickly transitioned to playing overseas. He played in nearly every country you can imagine over the next 15 years until retiring in 2011. He then opened up his own basketball school to help pass on his knowledge about playing overseas to the next generation of players. Todd Day 
Day was born in Illinois, but moved to Memphis and played at her stepfather at Hamilton High. The six foot eight guard elected to head to Arkansas alongside another guy we'll get to soon. Under Nolan Richardson, Day was a walking bucket with a knack for picking opponents' pockets on the other end of the court. He only averaged 13 points a night, mostly off the bench as a freshman, but that number improved around 20 for his final three years with the Hogs. For that, he made first team all SWC twice and first team all SEC when Arkansas switched conferences in 92. He was also a fixture on all American lists in 91 and 92. Day broke Sidney Moncrief's school record for career points and helped the Razorbacks to the 1989 Final Four. The Bucks made him the eighth pick in the 92 draft, one of three Arkansas players to go in the first round that year. He was solid during his first two seasons, averaging about 13 points in a steal while starting about half of his games. Day became an everyday starter in year three, averaging 16 points a night. However, Milwaukee traded him to the Celtics a few games into the 95-96 season, moving him back to the bench. That said, he did tie Larry Bird's Boston record for points in a quarter when he dropped 24 against the Timberwolves. Day bopped around for several more seasons, spending time in Miami, Phoenix, and Minnesota until retiring after the 2001 season. He then played for a bit in the CBA, making the all-star team in that league in 2005, and even did a stint with the Harlem Globetrotters. Day then jumped into coaching and currently works as the head coach for Philander Smith, an NAIA HBCU in Arkansas. Lafonso Ellis. As a senior, Ellis recorded 26 points, 15 boards, and nine blocks in the state title game. He then attended Notre Dame to play under Digger Phelps. He was an instant starter and averaged 13.5 points, 9.4 boards, and two blocks a night. When healthy, he continued to excel over the next two years, but he did miss several games. As a senior, he was fully back in the lineup and dropped 18 points, 12 boards, and 2.6 blocks a night, leading the team in all three categories. The 6'8 forward was then selected fifth overall by the Nuggets in the 92 draft. He played with Denver through the 98 season, averaging 15 points and eight rebounds a night. However, he missed big chunks of time starting in his third season when he only suited up for six games. When healthy, he was great, even averaging 22 points in 55 games during 96-97. After six years in Denver, he signed with Atlanta as a free agent and injury was continued. He would play five more seasons, spending time with Minnesota and Miami before retiring in 2003. Ellis quickly jumped into broadcasting, working as a radio commentator for Notre Dame until being picked up by ESPN in 2009. He'd stick with the sports giant until 2023 when he was let go and joined Fox. His son Walter played college ball at Bucknell and Grand Canyon before joining the Grand Rapids Gold in the G League in 2023. Laterio Green. As a high school senior, Green averaged nearly 40 points a night, leading the nation in scoring. When he participated in the McDonald's All-American game, he was undecided on his college choice, but eventually decided to sign with the Georgia Bulldogs. He was a force from day one, averaging 18 points and four assists across his four years with the team. By the time he moved on, he was UGA's all-time leading scorer and all-time leader in assists. He also made the All-SEC team three times, leading Georgia to its only SEC regular season championship as of 2024. Green is also one of only three SEC players to record 2,000 points and 400 assists in their career alongside Pete Maravich and Allen Houston. Despite all that, the 6-1 guard wasn't selected until the Bulls picked him in the second round of the 92 draft. He never played for the team because he was quickly traded to the Magic. In Orlando, he came off the bench for two seasons to average just under four points a night. After the 94 season, he joined the CBA for a few seasons before signing with the Pistons. Green also spent time with the Bucks and Cavs, but never got consistent playing time in the NBA. After the 99 season, he played overseas for a few years before hanging him up in 2002. He then jumped into coaching in the WBA and ABA, winning Coach of the Year and the League Championship in the former. In the years since, he's also done some broadcast work for ESPN and consulted for a few NBA teams. Donald Hodge. Hodge took his talents to Temple for college ball. The big seven footer only played two years of the school, averaging 13 points and 7.5 boards while starting most of his games. Hodge was then selected 33rd overall by the Mavs in the 91 draft and spent most of his career in Dallas. His best season came as a rookie, averaging 8.4 points and 5.4 rebounds. However, he only started 35 of his 249 NBA games, with all of those starts coming in his first two seasons. He played a few games with the Hornets in 96 after Dallas waived him, but Hodge later moved to Belgium to play pro ball before retiring in 99. In 2011, Hodge was sentenced to five years in prison for conspiring to distribute drugs. Sean Kemp. 
Kempf was an absolute stud in high school, winning pretty much every award you could in Indiana and making three straight Parade All-American teams from 86 to 88. The future Rain Man signed with Kentucky for college ball, but would miss his freshman year due to the NCAA's Prop 48 rule. His high school coach was worried about how Kemp would handle college without being able to play ball and almost advised him to jump straight to the NBA. But Kemp eventually decided to enroll at Kentucky. However, he left the team in November after he was accused of pawning two gold chains that his teammate Sean Sutton reported as stolen. Sutton didn't press charges, but Kemp left to attend community college before declaring for the 89 draft. The Supersonics selected him with the 17th pick, and the youngest player in the NBA took a year under Xavier McDaniel's wing before becoming a star during his second season. The Rain Man raised his scoring to 15 a night along with 8.4 boards. Those numbers would continue to improve over his time with Seattle as the uber-athletic big man partnered with Gary Payton to form one of the most exciting teams of the 90s. In 95-96, Kemp averaged 20 points and 11.4 boards, leading the Sonics to 64 wins and an NBA Finals matchup against the Bulls. Seattle lost the series in six, but Kemp averaged 23 points, 10 boards, and two blocks. After the season, Kemp wanted a bigger contract, but the league CBA precluded any changes to his contract until 97. Kemp sat out of training camp the next year for 22 days before joining the team. Seattle still won 50 games, and Kemp was mostly his usual self on the court, but he was traded to the Cavs once the season was over. Kemp had a solid start to his Cleveland career, leading the team to the playoffs where they fell to Reggie Miller's Pacers. However, in the lockout-shortened 98-99 season, Kemp reportedly showed up to camp weighing 315 pounds, which was about 85 pounds over his normal playing weight. In 2000-2001, Kemp was traded to Portland, but his play quickly fell off the map. He'd hang around through the 2003 season with Orlando, but was a shell of his former self. For the next few years, Kemp tried to make an NBA comeback, but nothing ever materialized. The six-time All-Star and three-time All-NBA player effectively retired after spending the 2008 season playing in Italy. Kemp has at least seven children with six different women. His oldest son, Sean Kemp Jr., played college ball at the University of Washington. Another son, Jamon, played at Southeastern Louisiana University. Over the years, Kemp had several drug charges, which maybe partially inspired him to open up his own cannabis store in Seattle in 2020. In 2023, he was arrested in connection with a drive-by shooting. The case is still pending as of 2024. Christian Leitner Leitner starred at Nichols School in Buffalo before taking his talents to Duke University. With the Dukies, Leitner won two national titles while being runners-up as a sophomore and making the Final Four as a freshman. That incredible track record of success gives him the record for games played and won in the NCAA tournament. Over his four-year career, Leitner averaged 16.6 points and 7.8 boards while making about 50% of his threes. He also showed a knack for making clutch shots, including the shot a turnaround buzzer beater jumper to beat Kentucky in 92. Of course, with all that success, Leitner also became one of the most hated players in the sports history, but he thrived under the pressure, putting together one of the best collegiate careers the game has ever seen. He was the only collegiate player to play with the dream team when they won the 92 Olympic gold medal. The Timberwolves made him the third selection in the 92 draft. While he never met that same level of success he found in college, Leitner played 13 years in the NBA, making one All-Star team in 97. He averaged 12.8 points for his career, but twice averaged over 18 points a night. That said, his pro career is best remembered for how often he moved around, as he played for six different teams and was traded six times. Toward the end of his career, Leitner was suspended for several games for using marijuana. After hanging him up in 2005, Leitner has largely focused his attention on putting together youth camps to help benefit the next generation. And much like Abdul Rauf, there is a great ESPN 30 for 30 documentary called I Hate Christian Leitner, if you want to dig deeper into a story. Don McLean. McLean moved to Simi Valley for high school and joined UCLA to play college ball. The 6'10 big man was the Pac-10 freshman of the year and made the first team all Pac-10 for each of his last three seasons. He never averaged less than 18.6 points a night with the Bruins and owns the Pac-12 all-time scoring record, which he took from previous McDonald's All-American Sean Elliott. McLean was selected by the Pistons with the 19th pick in the 92 draft, but was immediately traded to the Bullets. He largely came off the bench during his rookie season before exploding in his second year to average 18 points and win the NBA's Most Improved Player Award. Unfortunately, he'd battle injuries for most of his career after that, never playing in more than 56 games in a season. He was traded around several times over the next few years, and McLean was suspended for five games in 2000 for taking steroids, the first player suspended by the league for doing so. Teammate Charles Barkley would later quip, 
I've seen Don McLean naked, and he doesn't use steroids. McLean retired after the 2001 season and hopped into broadcasting. He's done work for UCLA, the Clippers, and the Pac-12 network over the years. Derek Martin. Martin moved to Long Beach growing up and played at St. Anthony. He joined Don McLean at UCLA, and the point guard became one of the best distributors in the school's history. He only averaged 9.3 points during his career, but contributed nearly five assists a night and finished his career in second place in Bruins history for assists and steals behind Pooh Richardson. The diminutive guard went unselected in the 92 draft, spending the 94-95 season in the CBA. He made the all-CBA first team and signed a few 10-day contracts with the Timberwolves. The to start the next year, he joined the Vancouver Grizzlies where one of his more notable stories happened. One of Martin's teammates said the Grizz were playing Michael Jordan, who happened to be having an off night. Martin walked up and said, hey Mike, shit's not falling tonight Mike, you having an off night Mike. Jordan then dropped 24 points in the final 10 minutes. Martin was traded back to Minnesota later that year and signed with the Clippers in 96. He played in LA for three seasons, averaging 10 points and 4 assists a night. He then spent two years in Sacramento before bopping around the league and overseas until 2005 when he joined the Raptors. As a team's veteran, Martin played for three more years in Toronto before retiring in 2008. He would then join the Timberwolves as the assistant director of player development. In 2012, he joined the St. John's Red Storm staff as an assistant coach. In 2015, he hopped on as the UCLA's radio analyst before taking a job as the head coach for the Reno Bighorns in the G League in 2016. Since then, it looks like he's been working as a coach and trainer at the youth level. Lee Mayberry. Mayberry joined Todd Day at Arkansas for college ball. He made the All-SWC team twice and All-SEC team once, posting a total of 1,940 career points as the second option alongside Day. He also averaged over five assists and two steals, making the six foot one guard an easy selection at 23 for the Bucks in the 92 draft. If you've been paying attention, that means he was playing alongside Day once again, as the shooting guard had been selected by Milwaukee with the eighth pick that year. Mayberry largely came off the bench with the Bucks, starting only 80 of 328 games over his four seasons with the team. He averaged just over five points a night, but never missed a game. In 96, he signed with the Grizzlies, where he was again largely a bench player. He was traded in the Magic in 99, but was released before ever playing in Orlando. Unfortunately for Mayberry, he has the lowest career winning percentage of any player who appeared in more than 400 games as of 2022. As of 2015, Mayberry was living back in Tulsa and worked as a scout for the Warriors. In 2014, he was hired to be an assistant coach at Arkansas. He left in 2017 to work as a high school coach in Arkansas. In 2018, he joined the staff at Oral Roberts to coach the women's team. Most recently, he was working for a high school in Tulsa. Mayberry has four daughters, all of whom played college basketball. Chris Mills One California high school coach said Mills was one of the top three players to ever come out of Los Angeles at the time, alongside John Williams and Marcus Johnson. The do-everything forward started his career at Kentucky. He made the All-SEC team as a freshman, averaging 14 points and 8 boards. However, a package addressed to his father was found in an L.A. warehouse that included 20 $50 bills, and he left the school as part of the scandal. He joined Arizona and became a star, making the All-Pac-10 team twice and winning Pac-10 Player of the Year in 93 while averaging 20 points a night. Mills was then selected by the Cavs with the 22nd pick in the draft. He played with Cleveland for four seasons, averaging 15 points during his third season. He then spent a year in New York before joining the Warriors in 98-99. He finished his career with Golden State, though injuries kept him from contributing as much as he would have liked. He retired after the 2004 season, which he completely sat out of due to injuries. During his career, he acted in Blue Chips and A Game of Life. Since retiring, it looks like he's been living a relatively normal life back in LA. Alonzo Mourning Zoe was one of the MVPs of the 88 McDonald's game. The star big man averaged 25 points, 15 boards, and an eye-popping 12 blocks a night as a high school senior, winning National High School Player of the Year. He signed with Georgetown and was an incident star. Morning was a three-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year, led the country in blocks in 89, was named the Big East Player of the Year in 92, and made three straight All-American teams. Over his four-year career, he averaged 17 points, nine boards, and four blocks a night, though it's worth noting that his block total could have been even higher if he hadn't shared the court with Dikembe Mutombo, rest in peace big man, for two seasons. Zoe was selected second overall in the 92 draft by the Hornets. 
He easily made the all-rookie team behind 21 points, 10 boards, and 3.5 blocks a night. Alongside Larry Johnson, Mourning would turn into one of the more dominant big men in the NBA, averaging 21 points, 10 boards, and over three blocks a night during his three seasons in Charlotte. Unfortunately for the Hornets, he rejected a contract extension in 95, and the team was forced to trade him to the Miami Heat. Zoe became the main attraction for Pat Riley's Heat, spending seven years with the team. In 2000, he was diagnosed with a kidney disease that eventually ruled him out of the entire 2002-2003 season. When he came back, Zoe signed a deal with the Nets, but didn't play a significant role and was traded to Toronto. He never reported to the Raptors and signed back up with Miami in 2005. He finished out his career with three and a half more years with the Heat, finally winning a title in 2006 with Shaquille O'Neal and Dwayne Wade. Zoe retired after the 2008 season as a seven-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA player, two-time Defensive Player of the Year, and two-time Blocks Leader. He has since been working with the Heat as the Vice President of Player Programs and Development. His son Trey also played at Georgetown before spending a few years in the G League and playing overseas. Gerard Mustaf. Mustaf played his college ball at Maryland, averaging 16.6 points and 7.7 .7 boards a night. After making third team All ACC in 1990, Mustaf decided to head to the NBA, where the Knicks selected him 17th overall. He played in New York for one season, mostly coming off the bench to average about four points a night. He was then traded to the Suns, where he spent the last three years of his NBA career. Here's where things get a little dark, so fair warning. In the summer of 93, Mustaf's girlfriend, Aletha Hayes, was found shot to death in her apartment in Glendale. At the time, she was pregnant with Mustaf's child, and several witnesses claimed that Mustaf wanted her to have an abortion, but Hayes refused. On the night she was murdered, Hayes called a friend and told them that Mustaf's cousin was in her apartment and she was frightened of him. An off-duty officer reported seeing Mustaf and his cousin at Hayes' apartment complex the night she died, and the cousin was later arrested and sentenced to life in prison. Mustaf never went to prison but remained a person of interest and settled with Hayes' family out of court when they filed a civil wrongful death lawsuit. Mustaf was then waived by the Suns and moved overseas to play until retiring after the 2001 season. He has since spent time working in youth camps and in the AAU circuit. Billy Owens Owens was the other MVP at the 88 McDonald's game. During his high school career, he led his team to four straight state titles and averaged 34 points a night as a senior. The versatile forward went to Syracuse to play college ball and played well out of the gate. Owens grew into an all Big East player as a sophomore, but took it to another level as a junior, averaging 23 points and 12 boards to win Big East Player of the Year and make the All-American team. He headed to the NBA and was selected third overall by the Kings in the 91 draft. He didn't want to play for Sacramento and held out into the season, so the Kings traded him to the Warriors for Mitch Richmond, breaking up the popular run TMC trio. Golden State did that in the hopes of bringing in some size to compete with the other bigs of the era. Owens played well, but never quite lived up to the hype of his draft position. He averaged 14 points and 8 boards in 4 seasons with Golden State before being traded to Miami. Ironically, Owens was then traded to Sacramento, where he played for 3 seasons. He then bounced around for a few more years with several teams and retired for the 2001 season with injuries progressively slowing him down. In 2010, Owens started working as an assistant coach for a D3 team. He worked on that job until 2018 and has since transitioned into work as a sports agent. Crawford Palmer The 6'9 Palmer moved to Arlington to play at Washington Lee before signing with Duke to start his college career. He didn't play much with the Dukies but did enjoy the team's success. Palmer eventually decided to leave the team after three years and transferred to Dartmouth. In his lone year there, he averaged 17 points, 8 boards, and 2.7 blocks a night. Palmer then spent several years playing overseas and joined the French national team to win silver at the 2000 Olympics. He wrapped up his pro career after the 2006 season. Palmer then jumped into coaching and admin work for pro teams in France. Anthony Peeler Peeler was originally set to attend Kansas, but wasn't sure if Coach Larry Brown would stick around, so he signed with Missouri. With the Tigers, Peeler was a four-year star, averaging 17 points, five boards, and four assists. His best year came as a senior when he dropped 23 points a night to win Big 8 Player of the Year and make the second-team All-American squad. The Lakers then made him the 15th pick in the 92 draft. He was supposed to be picked much higher, but his stock fell due to several off-the-court legal issues, including several altercations with ex-girlfriends. As a rookie, he averaged double digits off the bench. As a sophomore, he boosted that number to 14, but he only played in 30 games. Peeler spent two more years in LA, but was traded to Vancouver in 96 as the team brought in rookie Kobe Bryant. 
The next year, the Grizz traded him to Minnesota, where he'd spend six seasons and average just under 10 points a night and start about half of his games. He spent two more years playing in Sacramento and Washington before retiring after the 2005 season. Notably, he led the league in three-point accuracy well with the Kings and was also suspended for two games in the playoffs after elbowing Kevin Garnett in the head. Since hanging him up, he went back to school and earned his degree. He then started coaching in China and at the high school level. He seems to be looking for another job in the field as of 2024. Stacy Poole Poole went to Florida to play college ball. As a Gator, the 6'6 swingman averaged 14.5 points and 5.9 rebounds, though his best season came as a junior when he dropped 18 points a night. At the time, he left school as the third leading scorer in Gators history, though he's fallen down that list over the years. He went undrafted in the NBA, but was the first pick in the CBA draft. He did join the Magic preseason roster the next season, but didn't make the final roster. It's worth noting though that by that point, he'd endured two torn Achilles and a torn ACL, so injuries definitely played a huge factor. His son, Stacy Poole Jr., tried to follow in his footsteps when he was recruited to play for Kentucky in 2010. He didn't play much and decided to transfer to Georgia Tech, where he played for two seasons. The elder Poole's other son, Solomon, also joined the Yellow Jackets in 2012, but was dismissed from the team after only two years. And if you decide to image search Stacy Poole at work, just add basketball at the end of his name and thank me later. Stanley Roberts. Roberts led his high school to two straight state titles before joining LSU for college ball. The seven footer missed his first season as a Prop 48 player, but spent his second season playing with Shaquille O'Neal and Mahmoud Abdul Roof. He actually outscored Shaq Daddy while averaging 10 points and two blocks in his lone collegiate season. After the season, Roberts decided to head to Spain to play pro ball with Real Madrid. In 91, he was selected 23rd overall by the Magic. Unfortunately, his career was largely marred by injuries. He played eight years in the NBA, but only suited up for 300 games, averaging 8.5 points and 5.2 boards. His second season was his best, as Roberts averaged 11 points and six boards for the Clippers while starting 76 games. In 99, he was banned by the NBA for drug violations, and Roberts spent several years playing overseas and in the ABA. As of 2023, it looks like Roberts is trying to live a normal life and probably hates that he's included in this video. Though it does sound like he and Shaq still hang out, which is pretty cool. Malik Seeley. Seeley was named after Malik Shabazz, who's better known as Malcolm X. See, the famous social activist had employed Seeley's father as a bodyguard before the future NBA player was born. After a great high school career, he decided to attend St. John's. During his four years there, Seeley grew into a 22 points a night scorer, winning the Haggerty Award twice, making the first team All Big East team twice, and being named the second team All American in 92. That year, the Pacers selected him with the 14th pick in the NBA draft. During his rookie season, he largely came off the bench and famously lost his playbook. Radio personality Don Imus eventually got a hold of it, and Seeley contacted him on air to try and get it returned. In 94, he joined the Clippers and became a starter, averaging double digit points for three year straight. He then spent one year in Detroit before joining the Timberwolves in 98. During that time, he also acted in Whoopi Goldberg's film Eddie and on a few TV shows. In 99-2000, Seeley averaged 11 points alongside his best friend Kevin Garnett. Sadly, that spring, Seeley was driving home from KG's birthday party when his SUV was struck by a pickup truck driving the wrong way. Seeley was killed in the crash while the drunk driver who hit him survived and was given a four-year prison sentence. In 2008, the same drunk driver was sent to prison for eight more years after another drunk driving incident. Seeley's number two jersey was retired by the Timberwolves, and KG would later switch to number two when he joined the Nets. Matt Stegina Stegina was an all-around athlete from the jump, winning the 1978 NFL punt, pass, and kick competition. In high school, he decided to focus on basketball and earned a scholarship to Michigan State. He played for the Spartans for four years, averaging 10.5 points a night and leaving the school as the 11th leading scorer all time. He was also the team's all-time leading shot blocker until his record was broken in 2008. The six foot seven forward was selected by the Bulls in the second round of the 92 draft, but didn't make the final roster. Instead, he played for several seasons overseas until the Bulls brought him back to play in two games in 96-97. His only career NBA field goal was an alley-oop against Toronto. Stegging had continued to play in the CBA through the 2000 season, playing on preseason rosters for several NBA teams over the years. As of 2024, he's working in broadcasting back at Michigan State. Raymond Thompson. Thompson started his college career at Iowa. He was a solid scorer, averaging 19 points in 10 games as a sophomore, 
but was ruled ineligible due to academics. Thompson transferred to Oral Roberts, where he averaged more than 24 points during his two years, even dropping 52 points in a game. Despite his early promise, Thompson went undrafted and has faded into obscurity in the years since. Robert Verdon The 6'11 Verdon joined Malik Seeley at St. John's. During his four years with the school, he averaged 10 points, 7 boards, and just under 2 blocks a night. His best season came in 91, when he was named the third team All Big East team. In 92, the Nuggets picked him in the second round, and he played in 28 games for Denver, averaging 2 points and 2 rebounds. The big man then spent two seasons playing overseas and in the CBA before the Nets picked him up to play in 19 games over two years. His NBA career was over after the 97 season, but he continued to play in the CBA through the 2000 season. The big man then got into scouting with the Hornets and joined the Warriors staff as an assistant coach in 2010. He joined the Bobcat staff in 2011 and moved to the G League in 2013. He then went back to scouting with the Pistons before taking over as the team's G League coach in 2017. As of 2024, it looks like he's opened his own business centered around executive coaching. Kenny Williams The 6'11 big man was averaging 20 points and 12 boards as a sophomore in North Carolina. As a junior, he transferred to Fork Union Military Academy for better competition. As a senior, he averaged 31 points and 12 boards, winning nearly every award in the state. Williams was seen as one of the top players in his class and originally committed to North Carolina. However, he didn't meet the school's academic standards, and he instead played a season at Barton County Community College and averaged 20.5 points and 9 rebounds a night. He then spent a year at Elizabeth City State University, but didn't play basketball. Williams was selected in the second round of the 1990 draft by the Pacers. He spent four years in Indiana, averaging 5 points and 3 rebounds a night, largely off the bench. Williams participated in the 91 slam dunk contest, but was out of the NBA by 94. He then played overseas, largely in Israel, until retiring for the 2006 season. There's a very interesting article in The Tablet from 2013 that delves into Williams' odd life and career. At the time, the former pro had been in prison for failing to pay child support, but in 2017, he was seen at the Fork Union alumni game. 